Well, good morning. Good to see each one of you here today. Clarence, you, you and Pat and Peggy are going to have to do some recruiting, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Although, when, when, the, uh, when the choir comes down, it won't, it won't look, look so sparse, I don't think. But, but it's good to see everybody. I, I remember there was a couple Sundays back a little while. It, Jerry would be the only one sitting out there. It, uh, it was pretty well, slim. to tell me that. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, anyway, it's good to good to be here with you today. I got I got something for those of you who weren't in Sunday school this morning. This was toward the end of our lesson number one. Uh, we we were on lesson one for two weeks. It says as you conclude the first lesson, t just take a few moments to write out a brief prayer, articulating what you would hope happen in your life as a result of this study. This study is the real God. Be honest with God about where you are right now. You might have to acknowledge that you have just been going through the motions or that you have been preoccupied with life and haven't made pursuing God your top priority. Boy, I tell you, there was a time in my life when that would have uh, hit me like a Muhammad Ali hook. But even today, those words slap me in the face. And it went on to say, there is an ancient proverb that says the best day to plant an oak tree is 20 years ago. The second best day is today. No matter where you are in your journey, today is a great day to begin seeking God with your whole heart. Folks, you've heard me say it many times. Today is the day of salvation. Let's bow our heads. <clears throat> Almighty God, we thank you for this gathering here today. Lord, we uh, are pleased with your presence here among us. Lord, I just ask now that you would touch each person's heart that you would just open our minds, uh, take all the worries of the world away from us, Lord, that we might focus on you. Lord, I just ask that you would just uh, give each person uh, strength to sing to the best of their ability and the musicians to play with excellence this morning. Lord, we just love you for, and thank you for being here with us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So we're going to sing a song to celebrate them. So. Take our bread, we ask you to take our
morning again. We're going to let you come in and join us with the fun. And we're going to do a couple of fun ones this morning. Let's go to 525 in the red hymnal, which is we'll understand it better by and by. And we'll sing verses 1, 2, and 4. Familiar, but the tune's going to be familiar. It's 345. Tis the old ship of Zion. If you know the tune to give me that old time religion, it's the same tune. So. All right, let's do verses uh, 1, 2, and 5. near to the heart of God and it's got three verses and we'll sing all three verses. Thank you. 
Is it a little cool in here? Or is it hot? Huh? Oh. Got it. Normally, it's burning up up here. Uh, well, how about that? I would say come on up here, but it's, it's kind of cool up here, actually. Uh, Folks, I want to tell you, that was some good singing right there. Okay, before I forget, I would like to recognize our very own Andrew Norris, uh, sound uh, and video engineer extraordinaire, is not only a world-class bowler, he, uh, this week, I think, was... Uh, He's been uh, recognized at the Auburn University High School Symphonic Honor Band as a drummer. Wow. So, whenever we need a drummer, somebody's going to have to run the sound booth. <laughs> How about that? We just we saw that uh, picture on Facebook last night and just wanted to... Uh, recognize Andrew and thank him for all that he does uh, helping us back there. Uh, Andrew, you hadn't been here long enough for us to pick on you uh, like like we did like we did Joey, but uh, I think Joey started here when he was about seven or eight years old, I believe, something like that. So, uh, anyway, so uh, with the, you're in, you're still in the grace period, so we're not going to not going to harass you at all. But but we are very proud of you. And uh, uh, thankful for uh, all that you do. And good luck with all your endeavors and bowling and drumming and all that kind of stuff. You know, I, even though he had on an Auburn shirt last night, I, I still, still look nice. Very handsome young man. Okay. Uh, let's see. A couple things I got in the mail that I just wanted to bring to everyone's attention. There is going to be uh, a Women of Joy uh, conference uh, in several places, but one of them is in Gatlinburg, I think the closest place. A uh, bunch of people that you know on there, if you're interested, we'll put this on the bulletin board in the hall, I won't go through all that. And also that there is a My Story, Your Story, My Story, Your Glory, My Story, Your Glory, Matthew West concert uh, at the church at Wills Creek on March 5th. If anybody's a Matthew West fan, uh, I, we'll put those on the on the bulletin board back there for, uh, for more information on that. Okay, I did not get a, a bulletin for today, so what do we got to do? <laughs> board meeting Wednesday night, 6 p.m. on the 15th. Come on. We'll pass that over to Pat, too. So. I'm going to give you a little something here about what we're
trustees and finance and the pastor's report. And then after that, we'll look at the, our calendar events coming up. But after that, we're going, I want to start collecting information on um, that we can put together. That we can put, start putting together a one in five year plan for what we want to do uh, as far as our ministry and our missions in, in, the, in the church. Um, in here, I've listed several things uh, for us to be praying over and bring some of the ideas uh, for that night. Uh, it starts off with spiritual growth, talks about facilities, missions, uh, evangelism and outreach, education, worship, uh, fellowship and And since I'm not all seeing and all knowing, uh, I put other on there things that you might find as well. Uh, you know, things. So be thinking and write down your um, but be thinking about what you want to see on this. Wednesday night is we're not the, the like I said eventually we're gonna come out with a one in five year plan for this. So <laughs> but this is going to be an information gathering session. It's not, we're not going to come out of there with the plan at that point. Uh, what we're going to do is gather the information and then put it. I love spreadsheets. I'm going to put it on the spreadsheet and then we're going to come back together and say, okay, look at look at what we can do here. And this is so uh, this is a green session. You know, you may look at it and say, oh, we may not be able to do that. I'm not going to say But down anyway, um, you know, we, who knows what, what we can do. Uh, we the right amount of prayer and the right amount of effort. But the big things are, the big differentiation between the two, uh, between a one and a five-year plan, uh, what we feel in each one of them, if it looks like something we could do fairly quick, fairly immediate, uh, Put it on a one-year plan. If it's something that we would have to do some coordination with, maybe we'd have to have, uh, uh, you know, uh, we'd have to uh, coordinate with the state for certain things or the county or something like that. That would be a five-year plan or something like that, or something that would take uh, a different facility uh, requirement than what we have now or something like that. So please uh, look at this. You know, look at those. Please have, have your ideas ready, and uh, we'll, uh, like I said, Wednesday night will be an information gathering time. Uh, I've done this before. I know how to get us out pretty quick, so you can. <laughs> we won't be there all night. So, okay. Thank you. Okay. Now that I remembered to thank you, Gary, for bringing me the uh, bulletin here. Uh, just uh, remember. Uh, next uh, Sunday night singing, March 5th, 5 p.m., Sunday night singing. Uh, basic Bible study, uh, if you have one of these, it's got still got Elaine's address on there, but the Basic Bible study is meeting here in the Fellowship Hall, 10 a.m. I highly encourage you, if you can make it, come by. And, you know, if you don't feel like cooking or you just run out of time or whatever, just because you didn't cook, don't stay home. Come anyway. There's enough food for 100 people. Uh, amen to that. Okay. So uh, Bible study uh, Wednesday at 10 a.m. Uh, the ladies' luncheon is this Thursday at 11 a.m. Cape Side uh, Cafe there on Highway 77. Uh, choir practice tonight at 4 p.m. 4 p.m. So get out of here, and if you if you got to watch football, it's amazing. You know, I played college football, and I couldn't care if I watched it or not. I mean, I've got some there's some folks I like to see them do well, but uh, you know, like Edith said, you know, most most Super Bowls we've been here on first Sunday night singing, and that's what's important to us. But we're going to move it up and. Mary Jean's unhappy that it cut into her nap time, but. Uh, <laughs> okay, the Way of the Cross and the Freedom Center ministry, the bins are still in the back. Uh, probably going to take those off 
week from tomorrow. Week from tomorrow. So next Sunday is the last uh, last day to, to bring uh, stuff for the Way of the Cross and Freedom Center. Come on. A friend of mine volunteers at the Freedom Center. Uh, they need, still need, a lot of uh, small size men's clothing, uh, small size pants, 29, 30, 31 ones, uh, small shirts. They're in great need of those. Obviously, I can't help you there. <laughs> I could have cleaned out some jail. Two people could get me. <laughs> we, uh, we may have some of Brett's that we can. He's a 31, 34, 30, something like that. Yeah, he's a. Okay, so uh, we can remember that. Uh, thank you, Judy, for that. Any other announcements? Service call tomorrow. All right. Well, we'll uh, we'll pray for the heat. I'm sure there was a time when there was a pot belly stove in this room. <laughs> I, I, I bet. So uh, hopefully we won't have, won't have to go back there. I know we had an issue with it last year, and hopefully we'll get that fixed. Any other announcements? We still need somebody else to help work the sound booth, so Andrew can have a weekend if he needs it to go somewhere. Preferably someone who is not a choir person. But if you have any computer skills, it's very simple to run now. We just need somebody to kind of come up there and learn it and learn how to turn the lights off and on. Really, that system, you just click on it, it's up and running. Put it in the description, go live, and that's it. That's how simple it is. We need some other folks to step up and help do some simple things like that yeah. so everybody doesn't feel overwhelmed or burdened. Yeah. We'll talk about that some Wednesday night. So I would encourage, please, everyone. Sorry. Yeah. There's lots of things where we need a little help on. So just uh, be praying about that. That, uh, you know, and it's, you don't have to do it every Sunday. Just <clears throat> every now and then. Okay. We got a long list of prayer requests. I'm going to read these off. Um, and uh, I'd, uh, I will try to have everyone list next week. <clears throat> okay, we've got Taylor Hamilton, uh, Milam's granddaughter Angie, Will Lankford, Al Kimball, uh, Taylor Edmondson, uh, John Allen, who's here with us today, recovering from surgery. He's got the claw going. Uh, Allie Porter, uh, I trust she's doing better, I hope. She is good. Good. Amen to that. Uh, we got Antoinette, Hal, and Harriet on there, uh, somewhere down the list. Uh, Julianne is doing better, Stan Diane's daughter, uh, and recovering. Justin, uh, and the young boy uh, that had the dog attack, and then Taylor Edmondson that I mentioned earlier was also attacked here in town, uh, a lady. Uh, Mareda's uh, grandmother Maya in Denmark, got Sheila and Tim, Lola Ruth, uh, special needs young lady who's in the hospital, seems to be doing better. Uh, Jay with his back, uh, pray for Stan and Diane. Uh, we got Terry Collins from Falls Mountain Church, Quinn Morrison, a uh, young man who uh, got some pictures and a letter from him this week from basic training, doing well. Uh, we have several, several unspoken prayers uh, on here. Got Tony Nunn who had heart surgery, Amy Mason who is upcoming heart surgery, uh, Hallie Roden who has leukemia and her family, especially her dad, uh, praying for Roy Beeson, Martha's, Martha. Martha's husband, uh, Cindy and Gary's family, and especially their 
Uh, grandson Justice, any updates? Yeah, I uh, carried him surgery last night about 11.06. And they had to take his plane out and everything. Took some of the pants. No, they didn't. They no. didn't have to take him. They didn't have to take him in the pants or something. He got out of surgery about 2 o'clock before we heard this morning. He was doing good. Okay. 17 years old. So let's, uh, let's certainly remember them. Our son Brett was in a car wreck this week, but he's doing well and uh, made it out uh, with just a few bumps and bruises. Uh, the survivors of the earthquake, uh, death toll this morning I heard was up to around 28,000 and counting. I uh, saw a picture of a young child, I think two years old, was uh, buried in the rubble for 125 hours and doing well. God is good. Amen. Uh, Kira, uh, David Milam, who come on Sunday nights, Pat's neighbor. Have you heard anything from Kira this week? Well, she went <clears throat> to the, uh, she went down to Birmingham, but they're just giving her some, you know, some information about her hair. She will be going to a gastrologist one day this week. So. Okay. Well, let's certainly remember her. For those of you who weren't here last Sunday night, uh, we uh, we had a wonderful time, and uh, Kira played and, and danced her way back up uh, the hallway to her seat, and uh, boy, what a blessing that was. Uh, and uh, let's remember our, our friend Glenn Smith, who was diagnosed with COVID and uh, from Heflin, and uh, let's continue to play for the for the basic Bible study. And uh, folks, uh, if you want a blessing in the middle of the week, Wednesday at 10 a.m., right here. Any others we need to add this morning? Tried to cover them all. Yes? Chad Blackwell, who has a terminal brain tumor cancer. Thank you. Anybody else? Yes? Yes, I think we had them on the list. April, I think I said Angie. Okay, certainly, thank you. Thank you, Kathy. Anyone else? How about additional unspoken prayers? Amen, thank you so much for that. Okay, uh, Sherry's going to play softly. I invite you to join me in a time of prayer, and we'll finish with the Lord's Prayer at the end. Let's bow our heads. Almighty God, we are gathered here in your presence this morning. Uh, how awesome it is to, to know that you hear every word that's spoken, every thought that goes through our minds, every emotion that we feel in our hearts. Lord, at this time, we lift up all of our prayer requests to you, all the names on this list. And Lord, we, we just humbly give it all to you. For we know, uh, we learned two weeks ago from Joey's message that your plan is perfect. Uh, and Lord, I, I, I spoke this morning uh, uh, about the contentment that I have with your position in my life. And Lord, that's, 
That's what you're looking for is, is someone who gives it all to you. And Lord, as a group, we, we do that today. Lord, we ask forgiveness where we have failed you as we prepare our hearts for communion uh, later in the service. Lord, we are uh, here to repent and to walk away from all the bad things in our life and, and to offer ourselves as holy and living sacrifices to you. Lord, I ask you to hear us now as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Okay, if our ushers would come forward at this time. Almighty God, we thank you for all that you have done for us. Lord, at this time, we ask you to bless these tithes and offerings. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Last week, <laughs> I can't keep. What are you doing down here? Okay, I just wondered. <clears throat> I know there was one Sunday not too long ago that everybody switched up places all around the church, sat on different sides, and <clears throat> that'll freak you out <laughs> sometimes. I thought I would come down here and, and uh, be among my people. 
feel more comfortable down here. Uh, I do feel comfortable behind the pulpit. I just, I just feel like I'm one of you rather than part of the clergy, although I know I am, and I understand that. Okay, we're going to do communion today, and uh, we're, we're going to try something. Uh, normally, we all go down on that side over there, and they stand over there. How about, let's, uh, we're going to have uh, Stan Diane stand right here in the center about where I am. Uh, we'll come down the center. We'll start in the first rows, come, and take a piece of bread, take a cup, and then walk to your side or wherever you want to go, wherever there's a spot, to the, to the altar rail. Stand there, kneel there. If you're like me and you can't get down on your knees, you just stand there, and that's fine. Uh, and then you can eat your bread and drink your juice and uh, say your prayer and then make your way back to your seat on each side. Let's try it that way and see how that goes. Everybody clear on that? Start the front, work our way to the back. See, see how that goes today. <clears throat> I, uh, I want to share with you a little bit. Um, Today's the seventh Sunday of the year, sixth Sunday after Epiphany. And today I want you to put on your thinking caps. You remember doing that in school? Um, I vaguely remember it. It's been a long time. Uh, but I want you to open up your imagination. And I want you to just follow along with me for just a second. I want you to think back to a time earlier in your lives, not necessarily this week, maybe 20 years ago, 40 years ago, 60 years ago. And I want you to imagine no cars, no phone, no TV, no electricity, no internet, no heat. except for a fire. Water, you went out to the well or down to the creek. Then I want you to imagine that you hear rumors and gossip about a hotshot new preacher in the next county. I want you to imagine that... Uh, you're at your workplace. And during the, that time, you're still working, whether it's at the health department, the hospital, Goodyear, the steel plant, lawyer's office, a dental office, Redstone Arsenal, or wherever you may work and making a living. Picture yourself in that work environment and it just so happens that this controversial new hotshot preacher that you've heard about, maybe even seen him, shows up at your workplace or wherever you happen to be at that time. Imagine, just kind of out of the blue, if this new hotshot preacher He's late 20s, young guy, long hair. Walks up and says, Pat, I want you to quit your job right now and come and join me in ministry. Right now. Imagine your good years. For the steel plant. Good paying jobs here in Etowah County, making a good living for your family. Preacher walks up to you and says, Call the union hall. 
Today's your last day building tires or making steel. Come right now and join me. And for those of you who are brave enough to quit your job on the spot, no talking to your spouses, no time to think, you just walk out with this hotshot new preacher because there was something about him. You can't explain it, but you just leave all your stuff and you go with it. I can hear it now from your friends and family. What in the world have you done? And I think everyone knows where we're going here, but something else. I want you to go back mostly to your childhood on the playground, possibly at school, and it's time for a game or a race. Dodgeball. Kickball. It's time to choose sides for the team. And if you're at school... Well, I, that I remember, the teacher would usually choose the, their pets to be captains and pick teams. And if you're at home or in a neighborhood playing, it usually was the oldest or the coolest person that got to pick to be captains. They would stand out front and start calling names. I want to ask you today, as you think back, you imagine those times, when were you picked? Were you the first one picked? Were you in the middle of the pack? Or were you dead last? <clears throat> Depending on my age in the game, I can recall being part of all three groups. But for races, I can tell you that nobody and I mean nobody, one of the fat guy on their team slowing them down. So I was picked last. But you know, even for a, a husky young boy like I was, God blessed me with pretty good speed for a big guy. You know, sadly, most people go through their not lives never getting picked or feeling like nobody loves them or wants them on their team. If you've ever felt like that before, maybe feeling like that right now, folks, I've got good news for you. And it all started with those group of men 2,000 years ago who were just minding their own business, going about what they do every day, hard at work, trying to make a living for their families. And along comes a man, walks up to them, calls them by name, and says, I have picked you to be on my team. Come and join me right now. That was the day that Jesus started handpicking his team. I want you to hear the words of Matthew chapter 4. 18 through 22, and this, this just continues on from our scripture from last week. This portion in my Bible is called Jesus Calls His First Disciples. In verse 18 in Matthew chapter 4 says this, he says, As Jesus was walking beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, also called Peter, and his brother Andrew. They were casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. In verse 19 says, come and follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. A lot of translations will say, I will make you fishers of men. At once, they left their nets and followed him. At once. And then continuing in verse 21, going on from there, he saw two brothers, James the son of Zebedee and his brother John. They were in a boat with their father, Zebedee, preparing their nets, and Jesus called them. In verse 22, it says, And immediately they left their boats and their father and followed him. 
the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Now I know what you may be thinking, and I thought this many times myself. <clears throat> Preacher, this is Jesus doing the picking. I wonder could Peter, Andrew, James, and John have really said no. But if you think back, there were many, many who did not accept Jesus' invitation. In fact, there were those who screamed, crucify him, crucify him. I would say those refused Jesus' invitation to be on his team. And what a sad day that was. You see, the Sea of Galilee has a shoreline of about 33 miles long, and I imagine there were lots of fishermen out there that day. I just am certain that Peter and Andrew, James and John were not the only ones out there fishing. But out of all the fishermen that were there, out of all the men that were there that day, Jesus picked those two sets of brothers, Peter and Andrew, and James and John. Did they know it was Jesus? Well, either th I don't know. It, 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 but it would have been easier if you said, yes, if you knew it was Jesus that was calling you or telling you to come, then it would be if it was just an ordinary man. I'm certain that they had heard of them. They may even knew him. But, I but even if they knew it, the fact that they just dropped everything and just left it all behind and went with him. I'm sure if Jesus came in here and walked through those doors back there and asked one of us the same question or told us, I don't have any doubt that all of us would do the exact same thing. We would just go. But... The fact that we don't know, it just, it, it, absolutely it would. And regardless of all of their shortcomings, and we know a lot about Peter's shortcomings. He wasn't perfect. They had the faith to go. You know, uh, we've talked about this before, but take note of the response described in verses 20 and 22. It says, Peter and Andrew at once left their nets and followed Jesus, dropped them on the ground. They left their lives behind. They joined Jesus' team walking off into the unknown. James and John, it says in verse 22, immediately, immediately they left their boat and their father following Jesus. Think back to my earlier question. If you can imagine, if you were Peter, James, and John, and Andrew, if you were in their shoes, could we have dropped everything and left to follow a preacher with no church, no congregation, no money? These men abandoned their livelihoods and their future all for the unknown just because Jesus picked them <clears throat> out of many, I imagine. But Jesus picked them. I've tried to put myself in their same position many, many times. What would I do? How, how would I respond? You know, certainly, if I knew that it was Jesus, with all that we know today, it'd make it easy. But I, I, I don't know that it was that easy. I think their faith played into their decision. Something like that, usually if it costs more than a hundred dollars, it's my threshold. I like to go home and sleep on it, pray about it, talk to Mary Jean about it. 
These four men did not hesitate. They did not discuss it among themselves. They did not ask their father for advice without hesitation and no delay at all. At once, they immediately left the only lives they had known behind. They left them behind and followed Jesus. And in hindsight, even though they all faced terrible persecution and struggles later on in life, because of their relationship with Jesus, I bet that not for one minute did any of them regret their decision to join the team when Jesus picked them. Now, I may be wrong there, but that's just what I think. I can't prove it. I mentioned a little earlier that I had good news for you. Remember the thoughts of not being picked, whether it was because we were too slow, too weak, uncoordinated, or just not athletic enough and locked lack the God-given talent that other people had. <clears throat> the good news I have for all of us today is that no matter how many times you do not get picked first or were the last one picked, you sit here today with the knowledge that each one of us were handpicked by Jesus Christ to come and follow him and join his team. I could just imagine Jesus saying about 2,050 years ago, I've got to go to earth and be born in a manger. I have to live on earth for 30 years and then begin my mission. I have to proclaim God's word and then I must die on a cross for all of those that have been chosen. My friends, Jesus had to do all the things we read about in the Bible because he chose you. Jerry and Cherry chose you, Edith and Clarence, Pat and Stan, Diane and Martha, and Judy, Laura and Terry, and Miss White, and Elaine and John. I thought Bobby was behind me there. Bonnie and <clears throat> Leon and Marie, and Gary and Cindy and Beth and Mary Jean and Mary. And Andrew, John, and Pat, and Peggy. Folks, he chose all of us. And he chose me. Our stories are not recorded in the Bible, but our stories are recorded in the book of life. It says clearly, each one of our names are recorded there because Jesus called us. We may not have answered his call and invitation quite like Peter and Andrew and James and John did, but we said yes nonetheless, and all of us at Horton Bend Memorial Church and our extended family have been chosen by Jesus and are part of the kingdom of God. I tell you, I am so proud to be a part of the Horton Bend church family, but I'm more excited about being a part of the kingdom of God. So whatever all those bad memories are that you hold about not being picked, and I'm sure there's plenty of them out there, I've got my own. But the fact that I'm a child of the Most High God and I serve a risen Savior, and I operate each day under the power of the Holy Spirit, the guidance of the Holy Spirit, when I'll let my own self get out of the way. I'm thankful for that. So don't ever believe the lies that you're alone or that you're not invited or that you're going through this world by yourself because you're not. Just look around this room and when you're by yourself, look up because God's looking down on you and he's there for you. Satan wants us to believe that he's not and he wants you to believe that we're not here for each other, but we are. And I tell you, I am so proud of you in the way that you love God, 
But you serve Jesus, you listen to the Holy Spirit, and you love one another. Well, I'm so thankful that God chose me. Amen. <clears throat> I think as we all know, the table here that God has prepared for us is open to us all. All of us who openly repent of our sins and seek to grow closer to God. None of us are perfect. We all make mistakes. I remember a, a guest in my church 20 years ago, and uh, he was a pretty famous Alabama football player. He was asking about, asked the question, well, who am I? What is my identity? A lot of people will say, oh, well, you're a star football player. I'm Alabama. Not, it's not me, it's somebody else. Actually, it was Reagan Kroll's husband, John David Phillips. He was, he says, I'll tell you exactly who I am. I'm a sinner saved by grace. That is my claim to fame. Well, I'll tell you what, I, I don't think I'll ever forget that. So at this time, I, I would invite those that are assisting to come forward. see the tongs. That's okay. I just make sure I, I wasn't missing them. We're, gonna, we're just going to... Now, I want, uh, while we're having this little interlude here, uh, anyone who does not feel like walking down will be happy to bring the elements to you, and you can take them in your seat. Okay? Be happy to do that. Anybody want to sing? <laughs> Where's Antoinette when you need it? <laughs> there we go. Pat, this is the body of Christ broken for you. Diane, this is the body of Christ broken for you. Stand this. everyone to come forward as you feel led.
just like a well-oiled machine, is what I always say. But you know, that's, that's okay. God led. Uh, absolutely. And uh, um, I hope today uh, you leave here and, and realize that you're not alone. That you're on the best team that there is. Not that we're not going to have some struggles along the way. Not that we're going to, we're not going to have some tough times because we will. But ever how many days we have left on this earth, folks, I promise you we'll get through it together. With God's help, with the grace of Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit. And um, we're going to close with a song, 530... 536. 536. Yes, ma'am, come on. Friday, I had some hurtful news from my sister. Mm -hmm. And I was just praying that God would help her to get over it. And I was praying that God would help her to get over it. And I was praying that God would help her to get over it. And I was praying that God would help her to get over it. And I was praying that God would help her to get over it. And I was praying that God would help her to get over it. And I was praying that God would help her to get over it. And I was praying he wasn't five minutes, I was asleep. All day yesterday, all I could do was like the dogs, like the TV, like the everything. That one circle prayer, even though it wasn't original, took everything away. I felt totally at peace. I felt joyful. And I just want to give a big praise and tell you thank you. It doesn't take much him when we need it. But I just want to share that the Lord's prayer pulled me through the unhappy situation. Amen. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Bonnie. I uh, just want to tell you that now is the time. The altar is open. Or if you just want to pray in your seat, just raise your hand. Whistle at me. Do something. I'll come pray with you right where you are. This is a time for us to uh, respond to what God has done for us today. Let's all stand. Same word as one and four. Mary Jean joked about the preacher running long today, and I said, oh, no, i got a short sermon today. <clears throat> but, you know, I don't worry a whole lot about the clock. I just, I'm here to serve God, and I'm here because I love y'all. Uh, anybody got a word they want to share before we close? Okay, let's bow our heads. Almighty God, please accept our worship today uh, as our love for you. Lord, I ask you now to go with us, uh, watch over us, lead God and protect us. Uh, give us the wisdom to make the right decisions. Lord, help us to always do right in your eyes. Lord, help us to have a burning desire 
is to grow closer to you in each and everything that we do. All these things we ask in the precious name of Jesus and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for being here today.